Brush right up front. We do have one 12 volt battery in front of the trailer to the unit. One 20 pound propane cylinder that is full except for what we use to service the unit. We're gonna go ahead and open it up. Has an even flow regulator. You do have some of your hitch packages put on the front of the trailer. It also has a seven way holder on this side over here that keeps your seven way up off the ground while you're camping. And you can put your chains to either one of the sides. I'm gonna go ahead and put the light so the running lights are on so we can show you the cameras when we get to the inside. I'm just gonna leave that dangle in there. As we step around the corner, you'll do see that you do have your side marker cameras are on. We're gonna open up the front compartment. It does have a handle for manually cranking the jacks up or down, the stabilizer jacks. Once you get it on the site, level side to side, front to back, you'll put all four of your stabilizers down and about one turn past when they hit the ground. The fresh water tank is the next connection back. That is where you'll fill your fresh water tank. The little white cap coming out of the underbelly here is where it will drain at. We have an outside shower on this side that gives you hot and cold running water. We do have a 30 amp power cord. Blue light indicates that it has 110 power coming to the trailer. The cord is 25 to 30 foot long. The next connection back is your two low water drain points. Those are used in between trips and for winterizing and dewinterizing of the trailer. The red is the hot side of the water system. The blue is the cold side of the water system. We're going to go to the outside of the hot water heater next. Hot water heater is gas only on this one. You'll want to pop the pop off valve to make sure that you have water coming out of it before you light it on gas. But it also has a drain plug down to bottom. The drain plug is an inch and a sixteenth. Socket takes it in and out, but it is also called an anode rod. What an anode rod does is it draws all the impurities to that rod, eats up the rod instead of eating up the inside of the tank. Anytime the steel rod in the center is showing, it's time to replace it. But that is where you'll drain the hot water heater in between trips and for winterizing purposes. On your termination valves, the two inch gray valve in the front will be your kitchen sink, bathroom sink and shower water. The three inch valve in the back will be your toilet water. I would suggest doing the toilet water first, let all the nasties come out that will come out. Do your gray tank next, let all the nasties come out of it. You also have a black tank flush over here that once the tank is empty, you can hook a water hose and pressure regulator to that, turn water pressure onto it, has a little aerator on the inside of the tank that helps clean out more of the toilet paper and debris out of the inside of the black tank only. The connection right above that is your city water connect that you can hook to with a water hose and regulator and never have to fill the fresh tank, work right off the water pressure going to the city water connect. Lug nuts on the trailer has been torqued at 100 foot pounds. That's what's recommended on the side. The tires are aired at pressure, which is 65 pounds on the side of the tire code. They also have the nitro gas in them instead of having air in them. If for any reason you're out on the road and one would happen to come empty, you can put air in on top of the gas. But if you want the pure nitro fill, you have to take it back to like a plaza tire or a car dealership. Have them suck the air out that you put in it and put the gas back in. We do have a park cable hook up here in the back so that if you're at a cable park that has cable, you can hook your, their cable line to your trailer and have on your TVs the same cable they have at the park. In the back, it does have the backup camera already mounted. The running lights have to be on for the cameras to work. It does have a spare tire on the back of it. It's been aired after pressure, but it's not been torqued on. It's been put on the wrench. It does have the Parkland RV cover on it. We do have a compartment off to the right hand side of the spare tire that is underneath the bed in the back. It gives you quite a bit of space underneath there. As we come around to this side over here, awning, we're gonna show you more about it when we get to the inside. It has a 110 outlet out underneath the awning on this side over here. The next connection up is the outside of the furnace. It's gonna suck cold air in the bottom and hot air out the top. I always suggest putting a mud dauber screen over the outside of the furnace for the simple fact that that mud dauber screen is less than 15 bucks. It's $145 an hour for every hour that I have to take the furnace out to clean the mud daubers out of. So that $15 investment's worth its weight in gold if you ask me. We're gonna come just past the front door into the front compartment. It does have an outside grill, pulls out. 
Little red lever comes down, locks into place. Gas line goes between the back of the grill and connects to the connection on the side of the frame. It is a quick connect, just like an air hose is. So you're going to pull back on the collet, slide it in, pull it back in place. And you have to turn the T-valve on top in line with it for it having gas coming to the grill itself. Sometimes when lighting the grill, you push it in, you hear the little click. I let it sit there for just a minute to make sure the gas is coming up to it, turn it right back off, turn it right back on in the light. If you've used the griddle, they ask that you make sure that it's cold to the touch of the hand before you slide it back up into the compartment. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that out. And you also have a solar panel hook up here in the front. If you wanted to buy the solar panel that sits out beside the trailer, plugs into the two-prong connection here, it will recharge your battery on front of the trailer without having to be plugged into 110. So we're gonna slide right past that. We're gonna go inside. On the steps, they're pretty basic. They fold in, slide up to the back, lift up, slides out. Grab the handle underneath to bring those down. We're gonna open the door, fully extend it, work stuff into the inside. Once we're on the inside, we're gonna start up here in the top left-hand corner with the monitor panel. Check the battery life in it, shows you what the charge is in the battery. To get an accurate reading on that, you really have to have the 110 line unplugged. Anytime you're plugged into the 110 line, it's gonna show you fully charged. Fresh water tank, showing that it's still full. As it fills up, it'll show one third, two thirds full. Once it gets full, I turn the water pressure off going to the hose, filling the fresh tank. Black tank, same way, it's your toilet water to black water. It'll show one third, two thirds full. Same way with your gray tank, it'll show one third, two thirds full. The red switch on the far left hand side turns your water pump on between the fresh water tank and the faucets. The second red button turns your hot water heater on gas. Turn it on, the little door side fault light at the top comes on, it stays on for about a minute. Once that light goes off, the hot water heater will go through three lighting processes to light on gas. It's best to come in and light the stove top first, make sure the gas is pulled back to the appliances in the trailer, and then turn the gas side of the hot water heater on. It already lit, you kind of hear the roar on the outside. For any reason it wouldn't have lit, this little red light's gonna come right back on. So I'm gonna turn it off. First black switch on the left-hand side turns your LED lights on on your awning. Second one turns the light right above us on. Then we have our awning switch for extending our awning out. We're gonna go ahead and roll it out. It's good to make sure there's not a tree up against it or somebody's pulled a bigger vehicle up alongside of it, another trailer. Once it gets all the way out, it does have a skirt on the end. The skirt will be hanging straight up and down. And then I'm gonna step out there and I'm gonna show you it has a pinch point on each arm. What I consider a pinch point is the lower arm you can pull down against, which puts the pitch of the rain coming off this side of the arm. It has one on the front arm the same way. You can pull both of them down. If it's got a mist of rain, it'll come down the awning and slide off easier. For any reason the rain would pick up, you'll want to put it back up. It's just a touch of a button to run it back up. But to run it back up, you have to put the lower arm straight in line with itself before you roll it up. That way it fits right in the cradles on the side of the trailer. We're going to come back inside. We're going to show you the refrigerator next. The neat thing about the refrigerator, the door will open either way. Opens on the left side, opens on the right side. Both doors are the same way. The refrigerator door will open from the right or the left. Controls are in the bottom down here. You have from one to five on your settings. And your controls for the freezers in the top and the very back. The furnace is the next one. On this furnace, when you turn your thermostat to light the furnace, you can actually look through the bottom of the griddle on the furnace and you can see a little glass eye in there and you'll see blue flames burning inside that eye. All the rest of the lights in the trailer have to be turned on by hand. We're going to step up into the bathroom. Your shower is just like you have at home. has hot water on the left side, cold water on the right side. 
at your bathroom sink, there is a 110 GFI outlet that protects all the 110 outlets in the trailer. It does have a pretty good sized medicine cabinet up at the top. Two shelf medicine cabinet at the top. Two shelves down at the bottom. The toilet has a single foot flush on the right hand side. And it does have instructions on the back of the lid. It shows you to fill it halfway full of water. And fill it full of water and it, it will dump. Part way. If I can get my foot on it. It should have water coming into the bowl, push all the way down, it should fill and dump through the bottom. As we step into the bedroom area, all four lights in the ceiling have to be turned up by hand. There's no switch on the wall. We do have a narrow knob in the vent at the back and a little black button that turns the fan on. Narrow knob cranks the vent up. A little black button turns the fan on to bring a breeze from the front to the back. It does have a 110 outlet on either side of the bed and a USB port on either side of the bed. It does have closet space on both sides. And a fire escape window on the off door side. Red handle comes, pulls up, goes through the door window frame. We'll go all the way through the window frame that you can roll out on that side over there. It's real simple to work. You pull the red handle on the screen, pull the red handle on the window, slides all the way through the hole in the frame of the window and allows you to access out there. Up underneath the bed there is more storage and it is also where you can come in from the back. Also has the four shoe racks down here at the bottom. Two extra cushions for your kitchen table for when it makes down into a bed. But then all the lights in the bedroom have a little push button in the center it turns them on and off. We have a round vent in the ceiling that brings air conditioning back to the master bedroom. We're gonna step right back up through here. Do we do have a round vent in the ceiling that brings air conditioning in? And if I'm not mistaken, there should be nope, there's a round vent. We're gonna come back to the thermostat hanging on the wall. There is a place for a TV in the bedroom, and there is a TV, a place for a TV in the kitchen area does have a backer board inside of here. Plugs of that connection works, works off the booster in the master bedroom and the antenna on top and a 110 plug-in to plug it into. The light above the sink has to be turned on by hand. We're going to go back to the thermostat. We're going to turn it on. Gives you your fan speed low, fan speed high, cool, cool low, cool auto, cool auto and high. Then you'll dial your temperature down for it, for what you want the air conditioner to bring the trailer down to. Hit that mode button one more time, it says heat in the lower left hand corner. Hit the mode button one more time and it says off in the lower right hand corner. We're going to go ahead and turn that air conditioner back on. And let it run. I plugged the two wires in your seven way up front to show you that the cameras actually work. We have a picture of going behind the trailer. Picture down one side of it, picture on the off door side going down behind it. So you can see all four cameras from one monitor panel. I have it plugged into a 110 outlet inside the trailer, but it also has a 12 volt port that you can plug into the vehicle. And then there's several different mounts for the monitor panel inside the vehicle. It has a cup holder, has a suction cup that sticks to the windshield, and also has a framed one that you can just lay up on the dash. But that shows you that the camera works. Microwave, the only thing I can tell you about the microwave is I did warm my coffee up in it. Let's say it's 1130. Hit that clock button again to the two center eyes is solid. It does have a light for the stove top and a fan. We're going to go move the camera off the top of the stove top. It does have a glass stove top up top. It does fold up two times up out of the way. Protects your blinds in behind it. White button on the far right hand side turns your igniters on. You'll turn it to where it says high light position. Hold down on that and the igniter's there. I didn't turn the gas bottle on. But each one of them will light automatically off the zone. It has its own igniter that lights. I'm going to turn them back off. Before you lay the glass stove top back down to the top of the griddle, make sure that it's cold to the touch of the hand before you put the tempered glass back over the top of it. 
you'll want to turn your button off on the right hand side so that somebody comes up and pushes against it they try to ignite it. It does have a working LP detector in the trailer, carbon monoxide detector. Inside the drawer here is all the paperwork that was found in the trailer. And then we're going to go to our breaker box. The breakers are marked with the 30 amp being on the left hand side as they come across. Your next one's going to be for your AC. Two 110 outlets and then your last one is your converter. Car fuses from this side up and down are marked on the panel up here right above it what they are. At least four of them are for lights. One should be your LP detector, one should be your USB ports, and then your two for your converter down at the bottom. They'll also have a red light off off to the right hand side of them. So anytime one of the car fuses is blowed, it'll have a red light off to the right hand side. All the lights in the kitchen, dining room area have to be turned on by hand. The tabletop comes off the pedestal, goes between the two benches. The two cushions that's underneath the bed come over the top of the tabletop to make another bed for somebody up here in the front. It also will have a fire escape window to the off door side of it that works just like the one in the bedroom. Pull the red handle on the screen, removes the screen from the side of the window. The red handle right down below it comes up and goes all the way through the window frame for access off the off door side. That is basically about everything on your trailer. It does have the two quick cool downs on either side of the AC that lets all the cold air come right in down to this area first come into the unit. Once it gets cold enough in here for you, you can flip them back to the sides and it will go to the round vents in the ceilings. It does have a smoke detector above my head. That's basically everything on your trailer. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them the best that I can and thank you for your time.